So, this post is about Zach George in a recent video that he put out. If you've had your fill of watching videos like this that are commenting on the situation, then I suggest that you scroll past this video because it may well be more of the same for you. I'm gonna try and give you like a 50,000 foot overview of why you may be seeing so many people up in arms about what's being said. More, more to the point, what Zach George has said. So who is Zach George? Zach George is essentially a dog training influencer. Now I'm gonna make some distinctions here and I'll talk you through that. If you look at someone like myself, I'm a working dog trainer that happens to put out content. I've been doing this for 20 years. My whole model involves me working with people and dogs together to create outcomes. And I put out social media content to share information which hopefully if I do a good job of that, eventually that means that some people are going to follow along with what I do. And then hopefully along the way somewhere, I will have earned a belief in that person that I may have value to offer them. And perhaps later down the line, they come to use my services, attend a seminar, whatever. Most people in the dog training industry are like me. Then what we have, we have someone like Zach George he can best be described as an influencer in the dog training space. When it comes to Zach George's bona fides as a dog trainer, they are essentially more down to what shows he's been on, who he's worked with. It's not really going to be about his achievements as a trainer, and he's not working with people day to day in a meaningful capacity. And I don't know that he ever has, although I'm sure that someone out there will correct me if I'm wrong about that. Now, influencers, as we all know, if anyone's got an Instagram account, influencers are a whole ass vibe. There are plenty of people out there on, uh, on social media who have influence. Perhaps they have a following of two, three, four hundred thousand people. This is a common model. They're a very fit looking person. Let's just say that there's a woman who's young and beautiful. Perhaps she's blessed with excellent skin and a great butt. Many of her followers are going to see that she works out and that she's thoughtful about what she eats and has this great skin. And this person will then leverage her following to sell products. Perhaps a skincare range, an ebook on a skincare regime, a workout plan, perhaps a diet plan. The way that influencers do things is as different as the amount of people that there are who are influencers. But a very common model is that they will say, hey, here's how you should work out to have a butt like mine. Here's the skincare regime that you should use if you want to have skin like mine. Here's the things you should eat if you want to have a body like mine. Clearly, all of those topics, whether it's the skin, the physique, whatever, it's going to require an incredible amount of nuance to provide somebody with a solution that's well designed for them as an individual. There will be, across 100 people, a number of people for whom this one-size-fits-all program that this lady is selling online works very well. Let's be really kind, let's say 50% of people follow this hypothetical person's skincare regime, and as a result, they have glowing skin, they see some improvement, and that's great. But there's also going to be the other percentage of people, let's say 30% of people don't have the kind of skin that's going to respond to that skincare regime. 30% of people don't have the kind of body that's going to respond well to the kind of diet plan that's offered. Another, let's say 20% of people, they have the wrong kind of skin to respond to that skincare routine and it may actually get worse. Or they may just have the wrong kind of body that means that following this one size fits all diet plan actually sends them backwards in their quest to look and feel better. That's the kind of information that Zach George puts out. And that's broadly speaking how you can probably look at the kind of information that he offers. There will be a body of people for whom it offers some advantage. There will be some people for whom it just doesn't work at all. And there will be some people who are following this one size fits all advice with their dog that will actually go backwards by listening to what he's selling, the information that he's putting forward. Dog training is a world that when it's done well and it's done artfully, it's done as a craft, 
there's a lot of nuance involved. Zach George's recent position, he's used, there's a, a body called AVSAB. It's essentially the American equivalent of our Australian Veterinary Behavioural Interest Group. These groups are very political, by the way. Now, they've put out a position statement, which essentially, described by Zach, says the use of aversives in dog training is going to be not required or a thing of the past. Now, you may have never heard the term aversive. What aversive means is undesirable. So what that statement means is dogs no longer have a requirement to learn that certain behaviours produce unenjoyable outcomes. That's essentially what we're dealing with here. So as an example of what that might look like, my dog is a prolific puller on leash and my dog tries to pull me down the street. And I decide every time my dog pulls from now on, I am going to stop dead in my tracks and my dog is going to have its progress halted. The reason I'm doing this is to try and stop my dog pulling. The premise upon which that works is that my dog really strongly desired to continue forward. But now I've halted my dog's progress. I'm compelling my dog to stop using a flat collar on a leash and a leash or a, or a harness and a leash. And the idea is that my dog finds this really unenjoyable and that as a result of this, my dog will no longer pull because it finds having its pulling stopped unenjoyable. So that is essentially what we are talking about here when we talk about dogs no longer requiring aversives in their learning. Now, that is a grossly simplified version of things. And to be honest, what Zach George said in his video is grossly oversimplified. Not just because Zach is trying to reach people where they're at with dog training, it's also grossly oversimplified because Zach George has an ideological perspective on what is acceptable in dog training. AVSAV, and the Australian Veterinary Behavioural Interest Group have an ideological position on what is acceptable and unacceptable in dog training. And I wanna make this really clear. The science is what the science is. There is good science, there is bad science. There can be good science poorly applied and there can be bad science poorly applied. The outcome is more or less the same. A common zeitgeist in the dog training community these days is very much along the lines of any old research is bad and the fact that research is newer means it's better. That's not necessarily the case. Way, way back, 50s, 60s, 70s, where animal welfare was not exactly at its zenith. And there was some research going on that was very wild by today's comparison, even in the human space, mind you. We learned a lot of lessons about how dogs learn. But just because that research is older does not invalidate it. Does not mean that there can't be new understandings reached which refute or offer further color or require further context to be considered, but just because that research is older does not invalidate it. The modern perspective that aversives have no place in dog training is extremely intellectually dishonest. We tend to see a lot of it here in Australia, and in no small part, that's because we strongly follow suit with the American perspective on behavior if you're to look in a country like Germany, for instance, German veterinary behaviorists, and I have this on good authority from a very senior German veterinary behaviorist, tend to have a very different perspective to the US and Australia on the potential merit of aversives to play a role in a dog's training and behavior modification. So it's very important that you understand there is no true consensus that aversives have no place even at a scientific level. It is far from a consensus. It is a contentious viewpoint. One of the things that you will tend to find is that throughout the opinions of those people that are on the dog training far left, which is really what we're talking about here, like purely positive, force-free type people that have opinions much in line with this AVSAV, AVBIG type set of position statements, they are of the ideological perspective that these things have no place. They are very willing to accept this information and organizations like AVBIG and AVSAB 
They are sizable political beasts that are very concerned with positioning themselves to have influence and garnering wide support. That doesn't mean that everything they say is wrong, but it definitely means that unfortunately, and this shouldn't be the case because there should be professional oversight of what they say and there should be a high degree of accountability for the opinions that they share. But unfortunately, we do tend to see a lot of opinions from these bodies that don't consider the whole of what the science has to tell us on these topics. Going back to Zach George's comments, and many people in the dog training community, people that have even more experience than myself, people like myself, we are able to immediately see that Zach George's position lacks an incredible amount of nuance. And one of the things that you learn over a period of time is that where people make these kinds of broad statements without any consideration of nuance, you tend to find that this lack of information is going to perpetuate into other areas in the area of influence that they're seeking. And this should be unsurprising when we're talking about Zach George because Zach George has never had a reputation as a highly skilled dog trainer. We don't tend to see these people working with very high drive dogs, with bite histories, very difficult scenarios. While they may work with these dogs, they don't tend to work with them very effectively. That doesn't mean that in order to apply aversives in dog training, not even to apply them, to consider their use, this doesn't mean that your dog has to be a hard case. Case in point is the example I've given of your dog pulling on the leash and you compelling your dog to stop with the hope this method reduces or eliminates the dog's pulling. That is the application of an aversive. If the dog does not like the feeling of being stopped, Hopefully the dog will stay away from the pulling on the leash and there'll be other things that we can then positively reinforce. When it chooses to avoid that feeling, it's exercising avoidance. Withholding that feeling when the dog does that is actually called negative reinforcement. Characterizing these position statements, this lack of nuance is that if I was to bring up these subjects, there is an almost comprehensive unwillingness of these people to use the correct terminology that I have just applied because words such as negative reinforcement, aversive, these are unacceptable terms for these ideologues. So that's the situation that we're in. We have a dog training influencer with essentially no real industry credibility, put out a message, speaking to his people, hoping to influence them further down the road of believing that in some way, this was an absolute certainty that this aversive free future for dog training would exist and that it was inevitable. So I'm telling you all, the furor is because people that really understand dogs, how they think, how they act, their behavior, their instinct, what drives them, these people understand that what Zach George has said is absolute boulder dash. Now I've tried to keep this really nice because I do have some strong opinions. I really dislike the fact that there are people out there profiteering off people's good nature and feeding them absolute rubbish. And I firmly believe and have seen that Zach George is guilty of this many times in the past and again now. Ultimately, do I think that we can blame Zach George for this? No, he's merely a contributor. He's a contributor to all of this noise that is out there in the dog training community about the idea that it's never okay to positively punish or negatively reinforce. It's never okay for a dog to experience stress. And that noise, that noise that's out there in the dog training community, guys, I'll tell you exactly what it does. All it does is it negatively impacts across the board our ability as a community to have a meaningful discussion about what truly constitutes canine welfare. And that means that ultimately it's the dogs first and foremost that lose and there are a hell of a lot of people disadvantaged into the bargain. So I'm not gonna go any more in depth in that. Hopefully 
this video, as long as it was, has provided some kind of clarity for you guys about what this furor is, how it's come to be, and why so many people that have earned stellar reputations in the dog training community as doing kind, thoughtful, very skilled, highly technical work, comprehensively disagree with what Zach George said and the opinions that Avsab and others have put forward in their position statements that Zach is using to underpin his most recent post. That's it for now. I'm out.